What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you're here again. If you missed last week's video, we are giving away an Insta360 ONE X camera. If it's before May 5th, 2020, you can still get in on that. I'll leave a uh, link in the description and a card or something up here so that you can get to that quickly and easily. But I had a few comments on that video about how I remove the tripod from my 360 images. It gets a little tricky the way that those images are stretched. And so I thought we'd do a little video and I'd show you how I actually go about doing that. So welcome back to the show and here we go. All right, for a little context, let's just look at what's happening here. So I have my Insta360 camera. It's on the Insta360 um, selfie stick, which extends about a uh, yard and a half, meter, about a meter. And then I've got the uh, this little Manfrotto tripod that I use if I'm shooting indoors or even outdoors if it's not windy at all. You have to be very careful because these things really like to tip over and those lenses will definitely get stretched if this thing falls down. So this isn't a great tripod for everything, but for interiors and being very careful outside, it, it does the job. Now, when we shoot with the Insta360, with the uh, selfie stick, the camera is built to make that selfie stick disappear. In other words, each side of this camera is capturing a little more than 180 degrees, and then the software is actually just stitching to remove the stick, which is amazing. If you're holding it in your hand, you can't really see it at all. But if we put it on the tripod, these extend out so far that you see the little tripod in the bottom of the, in the, bottom of the picture. And if you remember in some of the images from the last video, I hadn't taken those out. And so you can see the little tripod at the bottom of the frame. So what we're gonna do today is take those awkward files that come out of the camera and I'm gonna show you how to turn them into something we can work with, fix the problem, put them back to the way they were and save them out to files that we can use for YouTube, for videos, for uh, VR headset, anything that you plan to use through 360 photos for. So yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into the computer and, uh, and I'll show you how we do this. So obviously we need some files. I have grabbed a few from my 360 folder here. I'm just gonna drag those right into the Insta360 Studio here where we can see that they come up on the left-hand side here just like you'd expect. We've got the first one open. This is that hotel room from Austria and you can see down here on the floor that we do indeed have a little tripod. If you can see that on the video, I'm not sure, but you'll see it in a minute. The second image is this one taken actually from the top of the car using the suction cup from the last video. The third is an HDR image. It's, it's made of three images that the camera took and it's merging those for me here in uh, the Insta360 studio. And so that is the one of me sitting there at that mountain hut. And then the last one is another interior shot of a condo here in California. And in this one, I actually used a dinner plate as my, uh, as my tripod and the suction cup mount, which worked great and slid along the carpet beautifully and made it super easy to do this virtual tour. So those are our images that we're gonna be using for this tutorial. Let's go back to the first one. These first two standard files, what I wanna do is just click stitch and calibration on these. And what that does is it just resets everything, makes sure that if it didn't come out perfect from the camera the way it's stitched, that we give it one more best chance to, to get the best stitch possible. So. For each of these, I can just go export. It'll pull up the export dialog. I'm exporting the type as a photo. I know where it's going, so I'll just let that run. And then we'll go back here and do the same thing with the second one. And the HDRs are a little bit different. I'll show you what that dialog looks like. So instead of photo here, you see it says HDR photo. And it's actually gonna do all the exposures if we want. We don't need all of them, so I'm just going to uncheck that and click OK. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Don't need all of them. Okay. And as soon as that's done processing, we can jump back to our folder here and you can see that now we have one, two, three, four JPEGs. Two of these will end in the word merged so we know that there are HDR versions. I'm just gonna take all of those and drag them right into Photoshop and we'll just open them all at the same time and then we'll work with them one at a time. Let's start with the easiest to work with image here. If we look at this condo virtual tour image, the one that I told you I used the dinner plate and the suction cup to actually make the tripod for this, you can see that we've got this big ugly orange strip that goes all the way across the bottom of our, of our frame here. And that's actually that little dinner plate. And if you think about this as like a globe that's been opened all the way up, if we fold it all back together, that little dinner plate is a very small portion of the image just right at the bottom, but when we flare that all out to this rectilinear format, it just creates this horrible streak across the bottom which makes it impossible to get rid of. 
And if you look at the carpet here, I'll just zoom in so you can see. You can see how this, the lines in the carpet get very wonky because this is all circular, really. Um, it's, it's, it's flaring in ways that you could never clone or patch or content aware fill in a way that would be convincing in the end result. So we need a way to remedy this. And while we're remedying it, I think we ought to record an action so that we can have this ready for us anytime we want to come back and make more of these fixes. So let's go ahead and jump into the actions panels first. I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call it 360 fixes. And then I'm going to start a new action and I'll call this Insta, come on, 360 1x tripod, P-R-I-V-O-T, geez, <laughs> removal. And click record. All right. So now everything that we do is going to be recorded into this action and we can play it back later, but we're going to want to add a couple of other things. So I'll walk you through this step by step. So the first thing I want to do is actually duplicate this layer. So I'm just going to command J keyboard shortcut to duplicate that layer. And then I want to turn this thing on its head 180 degrees. And the reason for that is that the filter that I'm going to use next actually will wrap the entire image around the pole across around that but it only does the north pole think of it like that so if i had if i have the uh tripod at the south pole this isn't going to work that's why we had to flip it around so now that we're flipped we can go to filter distort polar coordinates and that's going to do that wrapping effect and we want to choose rectangular to polar click ok and now you can see if I zoom in, there's our dinner plate, there's the carpet, everything looks normal. Now I want to stop my recording right now so that nothing I do from here on out while I do this fix is in the recording because we don't want it to do it all by itself in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to these little menu up here and choose insert stop. I'll just put clone away, dude. Okay. All right, so now we've inserted our stop. We actually want also have to stop the action. So I'm stopping the action now. It's not recording anything again, but we're still inside that action. So when I push record again, we're gonna just take off like nothing ever happened. So I'm just gonna grab my lasso tool here. And because this is such a basic situation, we can just select it, shift delete, use the content aware fill, just click okay. There we go. Now we might have a touch of a shadow right here. So we'll do the same up there. And if we zoom back out, you can't see that tripod at all because it's gone. <laughs> all right, so now that we've done our cloning work, we need to start our recording up again. So I'm just going to hit the record button again. Then we're going to go back up to our filter menu, back to distort polar coordinates. And we're going to select the other option, polar to rectangular to unwrap this whole mess. So we'll click okay and zoom back out. Obviously we're still upside down. So image, image rotation, 180 degrees and then we're going to stop our action. And there we have it. You can see the before and the after there. We've removed that tripod, no problem. Now I will say one thing in regards to this. This technique really only works if the tripod was either at the bottom of the image or at the top of the image. If we get, see if you're holding it straight out from you or you've got it sticking straight off of something, something like that where the where the actual bottom of the camera is at another angle, because it's doing horizon correction, it's gonna make it a little tricky to, to do this in those instances. Obviously, if you're having it hanging from a ceiling or something like that, you wouldn't even need to flip it over. But in most cases, you want that tripod to be at the bottom. Obviously, it's removing a tripod, that's the point. But if you're using like the suction cup mount, so if we jump over here to the is it the car photo you can see that the car is much further up or the tripod mount is much further up in the frame than it was at the very bottom of our uh, of our image from the condo so let's just run our action on this image and see if it will work I think it will because we're still pretty close to the bottom of the frame so I'm going to go to my actions panel I'm going to select the action I just recorded and press play it's gonna flip it, it's gonna give me the uh, message, clone away, dude, all right. So we're going to zoom into the middle of the frame again. Now you can see we're off the middle a little bit, but we still have a good enough frame to work with that with a few simple things. I'm just gonna do a quick selection there, content aware, fill that away. 
Then I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. I'm just going to sample over here and then use that preview to line it up against the uh, against the crack there so we don't lose the crack. And then I'm going to go do the same thing at the top, get a little further away. And then I can just grab my lasso and content fill that back out again. All right, that looks good. Now we'll just play the rest of our action. Zoom out, and there we go. Before and after, before, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go, and after. So that works perfectly, even though it wasn't exactly at the bottom of the frame, it was off a little bit of, a, of an angle, but I tried to keep it fairly straight up and down. Let's jump over to this guy right here because this is another one that has a very horrible, this is using that little tripod that I showed you at the beginning here. So let's just run our action. Awesome, zoom in, there's our tripod. And this one will probably wanna do a combination of things, but let's just start and see if it'll do it on its own. Let's create our little selection here. Content aware, fill that away. Obviously we've messed up some cracks, so we'll just grab our clone stamp tool here. And put those cracks back in as well as we can, and then maybe put in a little bit more of that color so that people don't notice. Good enough, nobody's gonna notice that anyway. All right, then we go ahead and click play again. Zoom back out. There we have the before and the after. You can see, can you imagine trying to clone this awful tripod out of the bottom without this technique? It'd be horrible. Let's say that's it for today. I hope you learned something. This is a fun little technique that makes it so easy to take the tripod right out. If you record the action, this is just you can burn through a whole virtual tour in the matter of you know half an hour or so and, and have the entire thing done. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Please like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Love to see your comments, so leave me one of those if you want. Don't forget to check out the Insta360 ONE X giveaway if it's uh, before Cinco de Mayo of 2020 and uh, enter to win that. And until next time, I will, uh, I'll see you.